Hey there, welcome back to my channel, Tech Enthusiast. In today's video, we are diving deep into the world of web APIs. Have you ever wondered how to handle a scenario where a request takes too long to process? Well, today we are going to explore a crucial aspect of API development, that is manually introducing a request timeout. By the end of watching this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of how to manage long-running requests and ensure your APIs remain responsive and reliable. So let's get started. I've already made a video on how to use third-party libraries like um, Poly to implement timeout requests or request timeout. When your API makes a call to your service which takes too long to respond, you don't want to waste resources, so you have to set time for it within two seconds, within one second, in case you could not get the response, then I want to smash that request and I return timeout request or timeout to, um, or the response timeout to the user or the client. Yeah, so I've made a video on that, how to create a resilient and a robust API, implementing timeout and a lot of strategies in the using poly. I've done that. If you haven't watched that video, then check this video description. I'll put the link in there. But in this video, we are going to manually implement our timeout, request timeout ourselves. We are not going to use any third party library to that. We're going to implement our own in here. And the key aspect of this here is we need an HTTP contest. In that contest, we need to set up a cancellation token. So for that token, we're going to be using the request aborted. This is a cancellation token which can set true or false and I will see that as soon as the time exceeds what we set then this um, aborted is going to set true. That is true. That is when the token is set to true you can now cancel or abort the request. Okay. Now we're going to do that in this video and we're going to have our own way. Very simple one and maybe in the near future you can um, make this work as a package or you can create this as a package so you can be using it all over in your application. So instead of relying on third party packages for this only timeout, you can actually create your own package or you can use it as a library for your own. <laughs> that is so nice. Good, let's have a look. So create a web API project in here that is in .NET 8. Well, as I record this video, that is the version that we are in now. So I prefer you go for that or higher. All right, so aside from that, we're going to create our service because you're going to make our API make a way of calling an external service. Okay, you know, if you want to call a standard service, you need to create a service for that, which has maybe an interface and an implementation. And in that, you need to register the service. And aside from that, you have to inject the service in the controller and now start using. That is where we're going to be doing. Exactly. So I, I believe you know this. Let's get started and now let's get into it. So first of all, let's create service for that. And I'm going to create just a simple service in here. Let me make a folder here and I make our services. So within services, actually, I want to have maybe a service which is going to return just string. <laughs> yeah, string. Now let's see. So I have a class and it's going to be service class. Now, this service class, I have an interface in there. So this is a service and I have an interface here. So public interface. Let me say this is i service, and now with this i service, we having only it's a task of string, and now with this task of string string we're saying that here we want to grab so let get string, and now let's pass in cancellation token into this. That is what you're going to be using to cancel the tax when the time exceeds. Aside from that, we need to implement this in here. So let's have our I service. Let's implement this interface that we just created on line five. And now in here, we are not going to do anything much. We're going to introduce delay. So let's say await tax dot delay. So let's pick it in a way that making a 5,000, that's five seconds. We are calling an external service in here and now this service is delaying. So after doing this, we want to return uh, maybe um, the data itself as well. Now we need to pass in the cancellation token to this so we can forward it in here. So in a normal API service, 
um, when using a HTTP client, you can also pass in the cancellation token from here, and yeah, we are good to go. Good. So now that we have this service created, we need to register this service as you know. Let's create dependency injection so we can be using it everywhere. So we have our builder dot services dot add. We can add scope or singleton. Now let's pass in i service in that we have our service. Okay. So now we have it injected nicely. Now what we're going to do here is let's go to our controller. And now in our controller, we're going to specify our weather forecast. Okay. So in the forecast, we're going to remove this because we do not want this one. And now let's make a simple endpoint. So HTTP get. We have our public async. This could be a task. Now this task, we have an I action result. Let's use the interface. Instead of making an explicit, the return type. Then let's say this is get as well. Then in here, what are we doing? We're going to say that. So we have our response. is equal to await. Then we have to specify our controller. So let's inject it uh, using primary constructor introduced in C sharp version 12 and I service. We can create instance for that at service. The interface we need to inject or include a namespace. And then here we're going to say that service dot get string. Now this string it needs or it takes in parameter for cancellation token. So in order to get this, let's use HTTP contest because in the controller we're going to have contest available. Then we have response aborted. So HTTP contest. Let's say we have request. That's a request instead, not respond. <laughs> yes, request aborted. So this is a cancellation token. If you check here, it is a cancellation token that you want to um, get it in here. Good, so cancellation token. Now, aside from that, we're going to return OK with the data. We are not really much concerned with the response here, but for running sake, let's return that. OK, so now that we have this nicely created, when we run this, what are we going to get? Let's try and see. This is going to delay for a while before we get our response. Let's run this up and check it. Out. Okay, so the app is ready. Now we can try this out. And now this is going to delay for five seconds before getting us uh, the data of a string. That is what just data, <laughs> the test of data. Yeah, so here it took five seconds. In order for us to notice this, let's grab the URL specified down here. Now I have Postman um, installed, so we can use that to test it. Now let me paste it in here. Since the type here is the get as a verb, we can click on send. And now let's watch and see the time that's going to spend to get this simple data from an API or service. You see that it, it took 5 seconds and 40, 47 milliseconds, right? 5 seconds, 47 milliseconds. The reason why it took that time is when you check the application, in the service, we are delaying for five seconds, right? So the reason why it's taking this too much long to return this simple um, data in here. Now, how do you introduce this um, as a request timeout? So let's say in case I set it up to defaultly or for generally, I want to implement all requests to one, attach all requests to a timeout of one second, two seconds. In case this time exceeds, then please do cut it off and I'll smash the request and I'll return uh, maybe something like request timeout to f that's for the eight as status quo to the user. Let's see how to go about that. Now there is, there's no need to install any package. Well, there's very simple three lines of code we're going to make this work. Let's go to our API. Now go to the program.cs file. And now here we need to inject it into the middleware pipeline. You know, when the app start, the middleware start from the first one to the bottom one. Now, in the course of this, we can intercept in here and now do our magic in there, <laughs> right? So let's do a simple magic for that. And this magic is going to um, intercept this and it will just check it and now get what we want. Very simple one. So here, any of them, as far as we do not um, jump the app.run, you can pass it on anywhere. So this all thing that we're doing. So app.u is the middleware that we are configuring. So you can see the contest here. It is the HTTP content that's coming as soon as 
the instance of this application start and in here we have a next keyword to go to the next one because in the middleware next is very important that is from middleware to middleware so next go to middleware next another middleware until it consumes all the middlewares good so in here we're creating a cancellation token in here and now we specifying the time that you want the token to last for five five hundred milliseconds in here that is half a second okay now here we have the content that is coming we intercept it and now we set this request aborted into all this the, the token that we have created in here so aside from that we go to the next one and now when you go to the next one the contest that you have in here you can see that you set the token here that's a request aborted you have you've given a value to it so this next year we're going to have a try catch in case it it exceeds or the time is up then we're going to have this exception so we're going to catch it up in here so here we're going to catch this when the token is cancelled okay now this is going to be done by the next statement that we're going to call and in, the, in case we have any catch which corresponds with this when this happens then we're going to set the contest here the same contest we're going to intercept it again and now set the status code to what 408 then we want to set a response here to request timeout so we intercept the contest and now we modify the contest and now push it up <laughs> very simple right so we can this is like a middle middle person in a line anytime request comes in you just intercept the request change something and now push it up and that is exactly what we're doing but with this we are doing it in good way <laughs> in good way good so this is very simple thing you know this is very simple statement or line of code that we are just adding nothing more nothing less so with this you can just put this as a package or as a library that you can be using it all over in your application now one good thing about this here is we do not need to use this in any of the controllers as far as you are done with this all controllers are going to create in this application is going to be get um, notified or going to be get included automatically okay so all controllers no matter the number of controllers are going to have in your application is it going to work across all you don't need to implement anything in the controller all that you need to do here is to include the contest or that's a request aborted that is what's going to be using when the http contest gets initiated or um, um, initialized good now let's give it a try and at this time round let's see from our 500 milliseconds so as soon as we click on executed we didn't have a second we must have 401 instead of having 200 okay from our postman we're gonna have 408 and now this has to be 500 or 560 millisecond not even to a second now let's wait so be a witness that the app is running <laughs> yes let's try this app and i'll see what's going to happen in here good so you can see that we have 408 request timeout and it took about 1,000 millisecond isn't it yes so we can try this again and now let's see what's going to happen yeah so 700 milliseconds so it's not even up to one second because of the time that we specified you see we have it in here and as soon as it lasts for that we have our time being injected as a request and now that we have our 408 response and this our message good so now this simple way we can now manually um integrate request timers in application so that wraps our guide on manually implementing request timeout in our web apis i hope this tutorial has been helpful and that you now feel more confident in managing request durations in your project remember handling time efficiently can greatly improve the performance and user experience of your applications if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tech tutorials and tips Leave a comment below if you have any question or topic you would like us to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.